All right, guys. Uh, I haven't done a video in some time, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I've taken on a second, a second job, um, and it's taken up a lot of my free time, which is great, um, but it kind of takes time away from me from making videos, um, which is not as great. But um, more details come on my job in the future. It's hobby-related, which is really fun for me. Um, so it keeps me kind of involved and um, up to date with kind of what's going on in the business of the hobby, which is cool. Um, so like I said, more to come on that. What I want to show today is um, a care package, which I'll show first, um, and then um, a, sort of like a mail recap over the last couple weeks. Um, so this package uh, came from Dave Bluejacket66, our resident um, food and beverage connoisseur, uh, sommelier, if you will. Um, and uh, he said that he just wanted my address, and I um, opened the package yesterday and um, pulled out this amazing uh, item here. So this is a uh, an Art View postcard. These were only um, issued for a very short amount of time. I believe they started issued in '56, which, ironically, is the first year that, um, or was the year that Hank was inducted into the Hall of Fame. But the address here is 225th, uh, 225 Fifth Avenue in New York. So I wanted to see if I can maybe go by that building and see if, what's going on there now. Um, but uh, I really love like the boldness of the of the color of the plaque. The plaques nowadays, like on the Hall of Fame postcards, are really kind of like washed out, and I I prefer this kind of brownish color to the postcard rather than the yellow. And this signature is just huge, huge signature. Remember, the postcard is probably like around three three inches wide, so um, this the signature is just enormous. And and Dave, I, you know, I told you many many times yesterday in our text, but I, I can't thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you enough for this. Um, so, so generous and just an example of the kind of individual that you are. Um, and I, I value a lot as a friend and a, a trusted resource uh, in the hobby. So that was amazing to get yesterday. Um, elsewhere, um, picked up a couple of really amazing things um, for the Hank collection. It's rare now in the year 2020 that I can pick something up for my collection that I don't have already. Hank doesn't have a lot of vintage cards, not even a lot of cards in general. Um, so when I pick something up that is unique to my collection, it is really uh, a rare and, and very, very fun opportunity. Um, this first thing here is not a card per se, but it is a vintage item. Um, this is a 1938 baseball tab and um, the diameter of the dome itself is probably like a little less than an inch, probably like three quarters of an inch when with the prongs, probably like an inch and a half or so. Um, but the distribution of these was unknown. And what is known about them is that they were issued in uh, the Midwest between like, well, well, I guess around 1938. It's when they can be dated based upon the player subjects. Um, but elsewhere in this set, you have the Gehrigs and the DiMaggio's and the Jimmy Foxes, um, and they share a lot of the same player checklists and art um, of the 1938 Overland candy wrappers that, um, an issue that I do not have, but Michael Shane does, uh, a very, very rare and very hard to find, a very expensive um, issue. Uh, this has the same artwork that that has, and um, like I was saying, a lot of the same player subjects. So I have a theory that these are somehow related to those, um, but has largely been unproven because we don't know how these were distributed or um, who even dis distributed them. So um, in my time collecting, uh, I had not actually seen one available for me to buy that was not in a collection or a set. Um, so I happened to strike a deal with the eBay seller and thankfully able to secure this I think, just think it's so cool. It did not come in this. Um, this is like a snap case and used to uh, display jewelry, so I'm using this to display this. I think it's actually quite awesome. Given the black background, it's very SGC-like. Um, next, I'll, I'll show that last. Um, made a trade with someone for, for this. This is a 1936 
R314 Type 2. Um, so uh, in these R314 Gaudi wide pens, there are five different types. Uh, I have all of but the rarest, and, and maybe one day I'll go over the different um, ways to tell them apart. But Dustin Bellinger has a great, great video about how to distinguish the types and what all this is. This is this happens to be the second rarest type. Um, type 5 is the rarest that Hank is in. Um, and you know, it's a little beat. There's some paper loss there um, that otherwise is not much not uh, much noticeable. Um, but the rest of it really presents very well as a crease kind of across his mouth. But um, the paper stock on these, as Dustin will attribute, is, is very, very thin, almost like a photograph rather than a baseball card. The back is blank. Um, but I really wanted the opportunity to add another rarity to my collection. Um, I traded him some, some modern cards and uh, a Type 1 of these um, in, uh, in, in an SGC3. So I'll be looking to replace that, but I really wanted to get my hands on this. Uh, in fact, I, I, note, I educated the, uh, the collector who I traded this with about what this was because he got it like as, a, as a kind of like a, three, a freebie or a throw into something that he bought and he had no idea what it was. So um, I guess without me kind of educating him about what this was, um, I, I wouldn't have it in my collection. So thankful that you know, he was open to trading. Thank you, Marshall, if you watch this video. Uh, what do I show next? I guess it's only um, two cards left. Um, something for the Tatis um, collection. Um, so the, my modern collector fans will, will really like this card. I think it looks amazing in person. This is the 2019 uh, Topps Chrome Sapphire Tatis base. As you can see, it has that atomic kind of shine there. It's great in person. Um, and uh, found this on blowout and decided to pull the trigger. I had a good night, which is uh, coming up in just about a second here. Um, I'll explain that, you know, shortly. But uh, I celebrated by buying this card, which is kind of funny. Um, could have just bought a beer and it would have been a lot cheaper. Um, but uh, really sweet card here. I think this may be the uh, the Tatis card to own. Um, Sapphire is just unbelievably popular, and uh, for good reason. The cards are very hard to come by and and very uh, expensive. <laughs> um, but really, really love this card. Um, I'll do like a rookie rummage one of these days and kind of go through my rookie box and kind of show you all what what that looks like. Um, Lastly, uh, this is a really special addition to my collection. Um, over the course of, of, of my collecting time, um, there are several issues that uh, I, I wouldn't have thought that I would even have the opportunity to own, given um, how much they go for and how rare and how impossibly scarce they are. Um, so the opportunity, like I was saying with the baseball tab, excuse me, um, to cross something off of your list at this point in my collecting journey is is so, so few and far between. Um, but this is a very, very special card. Uh, when I saw this listed, I actually knew uh, the dealer and I contacted him and he said within half an hour, three people contacted him for like the ability to maybe end the auction early or uh, some more information about the piece. Um, thankfully, um, I sold the uh, 93 Topps Gold Derek Jeter card um, to Silver Jackify as he did his video. So I had some extra cash, and uh, thankfully, not less than a week later, this was listed. Um, and I think it was kind of meant to be that this ends up in my collection. Uh, this is a 1938 uh, Exhibit 4-on-1 of the Detroit Tigers. And as you can see, it's missing a quarter of the card. Um, but as you can also see, that Hank Greenberg and Charlie Gerringer have signed the card. Uh, this also includes Rudy York, who uh, moved to uh, moved it to first base, and then when he did, Hank moved to left field uh, to make room for him. Um, now, this card is unbelievably rare and very, very expensive. Um, these exhibit four-on-one sets um, kind of range throughout the 30s, um, and it's a good opportunity to get uh, a nice array of Hall of Famers, even on the same card. Uh, the best card in this set, I think, is the Yankees card, uh, which has uh, four Hall of Famers on it, including uh, Gehrig and DiMaggio. Um, but 
this is only one of two signed examples that I that I've ever seen. The other being in a current Huggins and Scott auction. Um, it's certified by JSA. Uh, I'm hoping to see if PSA will slab it, even though JSA stickered the back. Um, but I won this card for a fraction of what I was uh, prepared to pay for it, and uh, it just makes it that much more amazing. Um, this card, complete and full, um, sells for uh, between twelve and two thousand um, dollars, and I think because of the fact that Tom Bridges is missing in the bottom left, it, it allowed me the opportunity to uh, to buy the card and win it. Very thankful that I did. Um, something that I don't think that I'll have the opportunity to get again, um, simply because it's it's such a rare card. Um, and I, I couldn't care less that a quarter of it's missing, honestly. Like, the important part is is there for me, and, um, you know, I'm thrilled to have it in my collection. So here it will stay for the rest of eternity. <laughs> um, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate um, the time you took. I know we're almost at 12 minutes now, but I wanted to show these um, the five items here in front of you. Uh, and... Um, Thanks again for watching, Dave. Thank you again for the generous care package. And uh, we'll see you all soon, I guess. Bye.